The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, and he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and out and go find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that, I, that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. I just congregation to be seated. Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today's second reading from the book of Acts is one of my very favorite descriptions or thoughts or pictures painted by the writer about what it means to be a community of faith. Now, often we use the word church to describe this community or our, our faith community. There's even songs that are related to that. I remember growing up when I was young and going to camp and singing a song about how we are the church, the body of the Lord. We are all God's children and we have been restored. It's not a building. It's not a place to pray. It's not a committee or a board or where people go, but it's the people. So sometimes we use the word church to describe that community. And in fact, when we talk about the early church, that's what we're talking about. But however, I think sometimes now when we say the word church, we mean worship or a building. And it's partly just the way that English goes. I think we get a little, we get a little la lazy, right, when we're speaking. And instead of just saying, I'm going to the church, we say, I'm going to church instead of to the church. You know, we drop the little words, but then the words change meaning. And so all of a sudden it sounds like the church is the place. Or the church is um, the, the worship service. I'm going to church tomorrow morning. What are you going to do at church? I'm going to worship. Instead of just saying I'm going to go worship at the church, with the church. So many words have multiple meanings. Um, for instance, run. Well, actually, I don't know if you ever look, um, have looked in the dictionary, but run is like almost an entire column of, of definitions itself. There's so many, it's hard to count. Um, but that's one that we have all sorts of different meanings for. The same with cool. We use that in slang or, you know, like, wow, they're so cool. Or the weather is very cool. Or that's not cool. Um, same thing with hot. I feel so bad for people coming to our country because then we use these words and they're like, oh, wow, do they, do, do they have a temperature? You know, like, that guy's so hot. I mean, oh, is he, is he okay? Or do we need to take him in? Um, Love. Love has so many meanings, so many different things. But the thing is, when I say I love tacos, I don't really mean the same thing as I do when I say I love my husband, right? Some cultures have different words for that. And the same could be said for the word church. We have different meanings. Now, I know that that's just the way language goes, but Today, I propose that maybe we start figuring out a different way to speak about ourselves as a community of faith instead of just using the word church because it has been confusing for so long and we have songs that try to remind us. And also, because I think sometimes when we use the word church in today's culture, it's a little bit misinterpreted, particularly by our younger generations. And here's what I mean. When people talk about church, a lot of times they talk about uh, their membership. I'm a member at, or 
I belong to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with that, it does signal for some people exclusion. This is where I am and you're not. It's kind of like a club. I belong there. doesn't mean that we can't invite people in, but there's those who are in and those who aren't, right? And now the thing is, there's some really good reasons to have membership because we don't want to just have um, recruit like a hundred people for a congregational meeting to vote out Pastor Heather, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but again, we need to know who are the, who's really invested in the community, and those are the people that get to make the decisions, right? Because it would be crazy if we only had a few people that were invested, and then everybody else got to determine what we did, right? So it's an important that we have some kind of designation, but again, sometimes it gets misheard, and sometimes that's unwelcoming to people. Church is also interpreted as like our worship. I'm going to church for Bible study. I'm going to church, you know, to do these things. I'm going to Wednesday night church. Um, and so sometimes for people, it becomes a word that's used for programming, right? You think about, I'm going to Sunday school. I'm going to choir. I'm going to this. I'm going to church. Today, in our culture, people are really over-programmed. And I'll say, as a mother of a kid who's very programmed, also, um, even though we've tried not to make our kids be that way, um, it's hard to think about going to yet another program, right? We want the things that we do to have a meaning. And we don't need a program to have faith, so why would I go to a program when I can have faith on my own? Of course, there are really good reasons to have programs in church. We need to have places where we can learn, where we can worship, where we can grow, where we can pray together, where we can mourn together. But at the same time, if we make church a program, then it's not as enticing to people who've got so much going on in their life. If we make it more about the relationship, then they'll definitely want to come. And last but not least, a lot of times we refer to church meaning the building, right? But buildings are expensive. Almost every church budget I've ever looked at has most of its, most of its income going to staff and buildings. Sometimes more buildings than staff. They're expensive. Yet, we need a place to gather. And gathering is so important we need a place that's safe, just like the pen, just like the sheep pen in today's gospel. We need a place to come in and be nurtured and know that we are in a safe place and we can be fed and taken care of. But at the same time, when the building becomes the focus and keeping up the building and doing this for the building, Sometimes it becomes cumbersome and it can in inhibit the other ministries that we want to do, right? Because we only have money to do this and not that. But we do need a place to gather. So there's good things and bad things about all the ways that we use church. Today or tomorrow, we're going to worship, to, or, sorry, not today, but tomorrow, we're going to worship together as a community of faith and we're going to go outdoors to do it. So it's going to be in a different place, in a different building. And sometimes I think we're not, when we're not going into the church, we're not going to the church or to church, I think that's a good time for us to also think about all the other things that maybe we need to look at differently as a community of faith. Maybe sometimes it's good to have another look, to survey the scene, to look at what else might look differently from outside. Sometimes stopping to consider our words and what they sound like from a different perspective can help because words are important. For example, in today's gospel, Jesus talks about being the gatekeeper and the gate, the one who opens and closes the gate for the sheep. Now, unfortunately, the word gate can often have that same connotation of keeping people out, keeping people in, um, and it sounds exclusive, but I want us to pay really close attention to the words because this is one of those scripture passages that I think often gets used to make people feel like they do or don't belong when really 
It's not that. Jesus says, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd. So this identifies who to follow. That gateway and the gatekeeper, that's the place to go in and out. That's the right voice and the right person to follow. Other people get in and out. So I think it's really important for us to think about the fact that that the pen itself, not the gate, but the pen itself, people are going to get in and out. Bad things happen. But but the thing is, those people that come in and out aren't the shepherd, or things that come in and out aren't the shepherd. And the other thing is, the sheep aren't always kept in. They're free to go out and come back in. They come and go. And that's how we do. Coming in and out of church, we come here for rest, for nurture. We go out into the world to live, to share, to find new ways to live for God. Jesus has come to give us life abundantly. And that gate and that voice are our signs of where the life will come. It's not to keep in or out. The fence isn't because, um, because right and wrong won't always go, come in. But we know where to follow. We know how to go in and out so that we have this path to life. So words matter. Community matters. Our, our Acts reading talks very much about that first community of believers that had all in common. Following the good shepherd, following Christ matters. So I'm not saying that change is easy by, by any definition. In fact, if we look at our New Testament reading, Paul definitely tells us it's not going to be easy. There's a lot of suffering in following and doing the right thing. And I'm not saying that even myself is able to sometimes let words go or make those changes easily. I struggle. I'm still struggling with some of the things that the younger generations have been t- trying to teach me recently. <clears throat> but just as that early church shared all things in common, we can too. And so when we live in community, protected and shepherded by Christ, we can find a common language that speaks to and welcomes all through the voice of Christ our Savior. And in this way, we live in community and we enjoy life abundantly. Amen.